Hello, and welcome to Community Connections. I'm Charles Clapsaddle, Station Manager for Manatee Educational Television. And we're very pleased to be joined today by John Vita, whose dedicated community involvement is truly an asset for Manatee County. John, thank you so much for joining us and taking time out of your busy schedule to discuss some of your community involvement and what you bring to this community. We're very pleased to have you with us today. Thanks for having me here today, Charles. I'm happy to be here. Well, let me tell you a little bit about John. John began his career in 1988 in the New York headquarters of Merrill Lynch. He worked in government securities and at the Federal Reserve's Treasury auction before returning to Bradenton in 1993. John's career as a financial advisor began when he developed his practice into what has become today. In 2008, he joined Morgan Stanley along with his entire team. John specializes in investment management and client relationships for the group and is a chartered retirement planning counselor. John attended St. Leo University where he received his bachelor's degree with an emphasis in finance. He's extremely active in our community, and that's what we're going to talk about today. And John lives in, in, in Bradenton with his beautiful wife, Tompy, and their two children, Reese and April. And John, before we begin, I just want this community to know some of the scope and the wide variety of programs that you've been involved with. You're not only a member of the Kiwanis Club of Bradenton, but you're a board member of the Manatee Community Foundation, on the board of directors of the Manatee Chamber of Commerce, the vice president of the Manatee Wildcat Youth Football, which I know you're very active in, you're president of the Manatee High School Alumni Association, and you've been an advisor for the Manatee High School Key Club and continue to be for over 20 years, and that's another key element that you bring to this community. But previously, you've been president of the Kiwanis Club of Bradenton, chairman of the Kiwanis Club of Bradenton Foundation, you're on the alumni board for St. Leo University, vice chairman of the Manatee County Children's Services Advisory Board, Manatee County Economic Development Council, you're the ass assistant director for administrator for the Florida District of Key Club International. Uh, board member, uh, board president of the Manatee Family YMCA, the chairman of the Conquistador Historical Foundation, board president of the Hernando de Soto Historical Society, and a board member of the Boy Scouts of America Southwest Florida, and a grad graduate of Leadership Manatee. With all of those things, I'm, I'm surprised you have time to even do anything other than that, but you know, you're really involved and, and committed to this community, John, and that's one of the reasons we wanted you to be on our program today. Tell us a little bit about yourself, where you grew up and uh, where you went to school, and uh, a little bit about your background. Well, it's a good thing I didn't do all that stuff at the same time, because <laughs> you're right, like. I wouldn't have, uh, wouldn't have much time to do much else. But, uh, I was uh, actually born in northern New Jersey and shortly thereafter moved to Poughkeepsie, New York. Uh, my father was uh, with Merrill Lynch at the time and, and as a manager and got moved around a little bit to, uh, to different places and that's what brought us to Bradenton in 1976. Right. So uh, we got to Bradenton and I was a, uh, in the inaugural class, I guess you would say, of King Middle School. Um, oh, really? So I went to King Middle the first year that it got started and uh, then on to Manatee High School, uh, where I was a member of the Key Club uh, at Manatee, and then, uh, then on to St. Leo University, uh, where you know, I thought I, it would be a good base for, for education, ongoing mm -hmm. education. I just really enjoyed the university. They're very small classes mm -hmm. and a lot of retired executives, so it was very practical uh, education. So did enjoy that aspect of my, of my education. And then uh, it had always been a dream of mine to, uh, to work on Wall Street. And, and you uh, did. And I did. So I, I decided that uh, uh, in December 
of um, 1987, right after the stock market crashed, would be a good time for me to go start my <laughs> career uh, in New York. So that's why I got into government securities, because at that time, that was really the only thing that was hiring, mm. um, that and compliance. And I wasn't even really sure what compliance was at the time. So, but what an exciting time for you, because you were fresh out of school to be able to go up and live in New York City, work on Wall Street. It had to be a, a big change going up to uh, uh, New York City. It was. It was. There was a lot of change, and and oftentimes during the the winter months, you know, the only time that I'd be outside was to walk across the street to the subway because I worked in the World Financial Center, and there we had a they had a beautiful atrium down there that had palm trees in it, and uh, I'd go <laughs> it was down and comforting. I, I would eat lunch underneath the palm trees and dream about the day that I got to go back home. So yeah. I spent about five years up there, and it was it was really a good experience. And 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 it had to be exciting too, being in you know the heart of the biggest city uh, in in the world. But let me take you back uh, for a minute to to Manatee High School. You know the, the flagship uh, high school uh, for Manatee County. But, you got involved early in, in Key Club at that point. Tell us a little bit how you got involved in Key Club w when you were in high school. I did. Um, my uh, my dad was in Kiwanis at the time, and and uh, over the over the summer he you know he picked me up and we'd go down to Kiwanis meetings and things like that, and that's where I first learned about Key Club. So I joined uh, the Key Club, and and the um, Kiwanis advisor at the time was Stan Stevens, yep. uh, and Stan. he had been a long time uh, advisor. I think over the last 40 years, Stan and I have been the only two advisors at, uh, at Manti High for, for Kiwanis. And um, uh, Stan was a, a great role model and somebody that you could really you know, learn from and, and learn different things from. So Stan uh, uh, was the advisor at the time and, and just really you know, enjoyed uh, uh, being there. Uh, one of the Landers boys was the president of the, uh, of the Key Club and just met a lot of people that you know, are still around today mm -hmm. and still out in the community today that, that, that from a very early age understood the importance of community service. And, and I think that's an important thing in, you know, conversations that we've had is that, you know, there was always a point where, you know, people said, you know, I can give back, I can do something. And that began rather early for you getting, because, you know, key clubs are known for their community services and, and their projects. And we want to talk a little bit about what you brought to Bradenton uh, Key Club. But what were some of those things that you got involved with as a young man in, in high school? Uh, there was, you know, there was always the, uh, the proverbial work around the school uh, capped by stadium cleanup after football <laughs> games. So That's we big. got to go and, and clean everything up. And um, a, lot of, a lot of different uh, organizations that really some, you know, Entre New and Junior League and, you know, organizations like that that would enlist the help of the Key Club to help with their events and, and working with, uh, uh, with them. But Key Club's always been very interested in the development of youth, as has, as has Kiwanis. So right. there was a lot, of, a lot of reading and a lot of different things uh, going on. But I always like to joke with people because I'm so involved in, in Key Club today and been involved in the state board and everything else that I actually got kicked out of Key Club when I was in high school. Now that's, that, um, I find that almost impossible to <laughs> because of your dedication and commitment. So, right. so I mean, that had to be kind of an eye-opener for you. Right. Well, it wasn't a bad thing. It was, you know, it was because I didn't have enough hours um, for a couple semesters, and, and Key Club has a, you know, has a requirement that right. you, if you're going to be a member of the club that, you, that you to. need to serve. So I was on the football team and um, having some fun doing some other things and, and uh, uh, just didn't get my service hour requirement in. And, and I think it was a real learning lesson from, a, from an early time mm -hmm. that, that uh, um, as I said, it wasn't really a negative thing, but it was right. just something that said, hey, you know, if you're going to do this, you've got to be responsible about it. So. And, 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 you know, be, be dedicated to that, that organization that you're going to work right. with. Absolutely. But I think, and, uh, and for those people in the community who don't know, that your dedication to the Manti High Key Club is, has, has been just truly exceptional and, and significant. You know, 20 years as their advisor, uh, you've helped shape uh, hundreds, if not thousands and thousands of youth who've gone through Key Club. And the, the Key Club, Manti High, has just done some incredible projects, projects that are really of value to this community, uh, projects for, for families, projects for you know, young people. It's really been a significant Key Club in this entire region. It, it has, uh, Charles, Charles, and I'll tell you that, that uh, 
um, you know, state recognition and, and international recognition of the club has, has been there for, for a long period of time. And I think it's really because of the quality of not only the students that we have involved in the organization, but the dedication of the Qantas Club of Bradenton, right. who's the sponsor of the club and has really put a lot of work and effort and time you know, into making sure that the club has what it needs to be successful. And, and it's, uh, so it's unique in that, in that regard and in that capacity. Well, in, in each year, you know, for those people in the community who don't know, the, uh, the Key Club undertakes a project, and, it, and some of those projects are, are, are pretty significant. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're, we're very proud to have partnered with you on one of those projects where you did the home makeover, the extreme home makeover. Right. And it was truly a significant project. It changed people's lives. And could tell us a little bit about the, uh, um, the evolution of that project. It did, and you, you mentioned it changed people's lives. It changed people's lives on so many different levels. It's, it's incredible to, to even think about. But one day, uh, uh, we, we always get together with the, with the new students that are going to lead the organization, and we have a, a breakfast, and we talk about our visioning for the next year and everything else. And one of, the, one of the students came up and said, you know, we'd like to do, find a needy family and do a, a makeover of their house like they do on the television mm -hmm. show. Mm -hmm. So we thought about that, and I thought to myself, that's a pretty impossible idea. I mean, for a bunch of high school students and a sure. few adults to be able to execute, you know, in a short period of time, and, and that'd be very difficult. And, and so we always, uh, our philosophy as advisors between, there's a Qantas advisor and a faculty advisor. Right. Charlie Mills is the faculty advisor and has been for a long time over there. But it's always our philosophy to make sure that the students um, uh, can go down the path that they want to go down. And, and sometimes that leads to failure. Mm. Um, and we think that those are equally as important lessons as the successes that happen. So knowing that, we, we, we let them organize a meeting and they said, you know, if it's going to happen, there's going to have to be a lot of community involvement and everything mm. else. So I get to this first meeting expecting that there's going to be a few people sitting in the room and kind of not much going on. And I walked in and there was about 45 people in the room. There were contractors, there were subcontractors, there was somebody from the county, there were people from permitting, there were you know, funding sources, there were Kwanians, there were Rotarians, there were Lions Club people, there were you know, people from, from every walk of life, from churches, from the YMCA, from mm -hmm. you know, all these different places. And that's when I first thought maybe this is possible. And, and and the one key thing, you know, aside from providing the leadership, you know, to, to make this happen, is, is that you, you really encourage these kids, you know, to go forward. Now I must tell you, you know, we got involved <coughs> pretty early on in the pro progress of it. All of this, this home makeover, with uh, all the myriad of different elements that had to be taken care of, from permitting to to structuring everything, contracts, subcontractors, was going to take place over the Christmas break. That's correct. Now, for me, I, you know, I was saying, well, you know, the best of luck, you know, this is a great thing. I don't think at that time I expected it to be fulfilled because it's a very short window uh, to do that. It's like two weeks. Two weeks. Or a little, but uh, these young people, uh, boys, girls, they went to this uh, uh, opportunity uh, so energized and so enthusiastic about doing this project. It, it, was, it was a joy to watch it. And tell, tell us about the progress of the work. Now, the house, is, it, was, it was in severe need of, of mm -hmm. some upgrades. Yep, the house, uh, the house itself uh, had been the, the victim of several drive-by shootings uh, in one of the communities in Bradenton and was in really you know, difficult shape. The lady that, uh, that lived there with her family um, had adopted many of the children that were living there. And from you know, at different times, there were different numbers of children there and, and that kind of stuff. And, and through no fault of her own, uh, she was put in a, in a situation that was a bad situation. And um, with the help of people like Jerry Parrish at the YMCA, they right. corrected that and, and they got rid of that. But there still was a big need for decent housing. Right. And uh, so, so we selected them as a family at the recommendation and with the support of, of the Y, mm -hmm. knowing that they had been fully vetted and, you know, and, and worthy, really, if you will, of, of you know, having this done for them. 
So we uh, uh, got everybody together and, and went over to the house the first time. And when I walked in the first time to look at it, I thought even more so, there's no way we're going to be able to do this in, in two weeks. And, you know, the, the, the contractors kept talking about discovery. And that was kind of a new word for me in the, in the, in the construction um, uh, industry. But, but as we got into the work and peeled apart walls and things like that, we found different challenges mm. uh, that, that had happened. So we, you know, we, we had several meetings um, that you were a part of and, and you all came and filmed and, and we, you know, kind of really documented the, the, the progress. start and the progress and everything else from start to finish. And uh, uh, these meetings were great because there was always a lot of debate back and forth as to what the best way to do something right. was. Because knowing that we had a limited time frame and knowing that we, you know, did, I mean, really what probably should have happened was the whole house get knocked down and start from the, you know, start from the very beginning. But right. that wasn't the vision of the of the children and the lady really did you know love her house but she had her father living in the backyard in a car right, right. Um, she had uh, um, you know multiple animals running around the yard was you know full of, of junk right. um, there was no decent facilities cooking you know all that stuff I mean it just there was, was really wiring tough. problems there was anything that you could find with the distressed property was really wrong with this and it That's was overgrown correct. wiring uh, plumbing all of those needs I mean it was it was a challenge absolutely you know, it was a challenge ordinarily but even more of a challenge when you put a lot of young people with little or or no experience and within the time frame that they set for themselves. And uh, I must tell you, John, it, it was truly an amazing feat to see these young people go in there and dedicate themselves. Early mornings, I remember they were out there many times when it was raining and pouring down rain, and they were out there in droves. And not yep. just one or two or just like a select few. These were uh, all of the key clubbers and all of the people who, who wanted to participate. Absolutely, and, and you talk about, you know, we said earlier that it had a profound effect on the lives of many people in the community, not the least of which was the family, certainly, who, you know, who, had, a, who had a wonderful place to stay uh, when we were all through, but also those kids themselves and mm -hmm. people like me and people that came together and worked and, and worked in that community. And all of a sudden something happened in the community as we're rebuilding this house. You looked down the road and you saw yeah. lawns getting mowed that hadn't been yeah. mowed in months, obviously. You saw a coat of paint go on another house that hadn't been painted in years. And, and just that little bit, mm -hmm. um, I think, energized that neighborhood and, and energized that community. And, and to this day, I still run into students that worked on that house that go by <laughs> the house, that drive by and look and and see what kind of shape it's in because they really feel like they have ownership in it and, and that they and, were and part of something so. that happened. So so it was really, you know, it was really neat watching the effect on um, you know, everybody from from people that, that really needed the help and, and didn't have much in the way of resources, um, to, you know, the people in the in the religious community and mm -hmm. the churches to people who were came from very wealthy families and things like that um, and and you know had everything that they needed you know to watch their faces when a little girl walked into her room and said yeah. I have a pillow yeah. you know was was just profound it was really you know it amazing was. and I think it was lessons that they'll take with them for the rest of their lives. And, and, and I couldn't agree with you more. And I remember, you know, on that final day uh, when you brought the family back, I think you had a school bus, mm -hmm. much like the TV show where you had the bus in front right. of you, had a school bus kind of blocking the, the view of it. And you pull that, and that family was absolutely moved, um, not by just the, 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 the hard work that went in it, but the thoughtfulness and the absolutely. caring that went into there. And those young people who participated, I think if I remember correctly, and I think I idea you give a very moving speech on the doorstep of there thanking not just you know the kids but the whole community for pitching in and making a difference and yeah. and if the key club never did another project as long as they're a key club that project would stand on its own forever for a long time however the key club doesn't do that it's each year they find something new to do and and, and each time they try to do it with you know thoughtfulness and something that's going to better the community and that's thanks to your leadership and your kind of vision of how to help shape these young people so i Thank think it's you. a it's, wonderful it's, 
you know, it's, 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 uh, it keeps me young, and they, they, they have a way of doing that. And, and uh, um, as I said, I, I doubted them from the, from the time they said that they wanted to do this, whereas I don't think any of them ever had a doubt in their mind. <laughs> and we're sitting there, you know, and, and we ripped out a floor of the bathroom, and Chris Woodward and I were standing in there, and, and uh, the whole floor was rotten out underneath. So we had to disassemble all the floor, all the floor joists and everything else, and rebuild the entire floor from the ground up. We got into one of the rooms, and, and uh, we, it was way more than we thought it was going to be in terms of the construction. And we got to a part of the roof that the roof was literally ready to fall in. It was literally, if we hadn't have been there, I don't think it would have lasted another week. And we didn't have any money in the budget for a roof or roofing or any of that type of thing. So I called George and Bruce Manson at Manson Roofing, and boom, you know, that day they had a crew out there. And I said, he said, he said, you know, well, when do you need this by? After I explained the situation to him, I said, well, you know, we're going to dedicate the house on New Year's Eve. And it was like the 28th of <laughs> December or something like that. So, and, and it happened and they made it happen. It was just those types of things in the community that just really, you know, you, you look back and, and that's what makes our community so special, right. I think, are, are things like that and the people like that 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 are willing to uh, to do it, you know, Armstrong Plumbing, you know, Bill Edwards, there were, I mean, there there the list so goes on people. and on and on and on, um, to, to the cool today people, mm -hmm. you know, with the air conditioning, and they just, they're always, I always see them out in the community doing wonderful things, so. But, but I must say, too, I, I mean, all the people that chipped in on this project and other projects as well, you know, they do it, uh, a, a, a great deal of it out of the respect and admiration that they have for you and what you've done for the Key Club. And, and if, if just working with a key club was one thing, that's a great thing, but you've been involved in so many different uh, philanthropic and, and service organizations, and I just want to take a few moments and talk about some of the leadership roles that you've played with there. Now, you know, you've been involved with the Chamber of Commerce for, for many years, and now you're on the board of that. Why do you think the Chamber of Commerce is such a vital part of this community? Yeah, I've actually rotated off the, uh, off the board now, but... Um uh, but I think that the chamber, you know, is is really a, an incubator. Um, and, and you look at you look at what the chamber does and, and all the programs that they have that they get going and things like leadership manatee that they participate in and and everything else. So so they incubate uh, these these people and businesses and everything else and then give them the means to be supported uh, and to go someplace to have support and to you know form ongoing lasting relationships and whether it's marketing or development or management skills or whatever, uh, they just do a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. and, and that was really one of my first endeavors into, you know, into things. And I, and I think, you know, I think we all, you know, people all the time ask me, how did I get this all started and what did I do to start my community service? And I think really, you know, and the, and the chamber is a perfect example of this, is that oftentimes we start for very selfish reasons. Mm -hmm. I did it because I was young in the community. And while I knew people and everything else, I wanted to know more people sure. and I wanted to make professional connections and I wanted to do different things. And uh, so I found every way that I possibly could to start to make those connections. And certainly where better to start than the Chamber of Commerce Exactly. You know, when you start to do those things. But then it evolved into what it is now for me and the passion and the love and the, the, it's it's. People, you know, people play golf and fish and everything else, and I guess I go out and do community service. So, it's <laughs> and, a hobby. And you've been doing it a lot, and I think that you know the reasons why people get involved in community service, you know, they're they're wide and varied. But I think the people that are are dedicated and who have the uh, the long term commitment to it do it because they really want to, mm -hmm. because they feel one that there's a need, and two that they can contribute. And I think that's what kind of separates people who have a commitment and then you know, or just like, you know, want to do it for, for a variety of reasons. Sure. But, you know, without the chamber, you know, you, you know, the chamber's done a wonderful thing. The whole team over there, Bob Bartz and Jackie Dazelski, you know, they bring that kind of leadership, you know, that helps young, young businesses and established businesses. But at the same time, they do a lot of great things in this community as mm -hmm. well for outreach and, and involvement. One of the things I did want to talk to you about as well is that, you know, you've been involved with the Kiwanis Club for many, many years. And uh, there is no other uh, organization I think of in, in the entire region that does as many things in this community and who are so low key. Uh, there's a lot of organizations that do a lot. Braden Kiwanis does more, but they're very low key. They don't you know, feel that they need to have 
to pat themselves on the back or, you know, we've done this and that. But they do a lot of good. And, and talk to us about not only your involvement with the club, but also with the foundation. Well, my, my involvement with the club started uh, pretty much when I came back from New York and, and uh, started my career here. And again, you know, for very selfish reasons, all the movers and the shakers in the community were in the Braden and Kiwanis Club. And, and so uh, I joined the club. Um, it was largely to see the um, and be with the, the Judge Tallies and the Ed Kershers and the people, you know, Ed Price's, God mm -hmm. rest all their souls. I mean, they're no longer with us, mm -hmm. but they were the characters. They were the movers and shakers, and, and, and the, you had this beautiful, tremendous, rich legacy there mm -hmm. that, that, that I just wanted to be a part of. And, and you know, when you get into a situation like that, uh, I think that, that, you know, you want to you wanna be recognized, you want to, you know, do things, and you want to be involved. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really what it, was, what it was for me. But then it became, you know, this passion for me. And, and uh, uh, when Stan Stevens asked me if I'd like to transition into, you know, being the key club advisor, so I was honored. I mean, it was literally, I mean, you talk about a... Uh, somebody that had been doing it, I think, for 24 years. So that's my goal is to, to break Stan's record. But um, and tell Stan that next. Uh, <laughs> I, will, I always do tell Stan that. I remind him that I'm coming up on on uh, 21 years now. But uh, but to, to to really you know to to be involved in that. So I was actually the chair of several committees at a pretty you know young age and mm -hmm. became became the president at a pretty young age. Uh, and and you know and just continued to. Uh, you know, let that work that, that, that everybody was doing, you know, be a part of it. So that's what it was, was, you know, in that club, it's everybody talks about the time commitment and everything to be the president, but right. it's, it's, it is a time commitment. But there's so many good people that run Absolutely. good things and do good things that it's just incredible. So then we sold the trailer park mm -hmm. um, that we were deriving all of our, our rents from and everything else, and that was the money that was going out in the community. And we needed to do something with that money, so we established the Qantas Club of Braden Foundation. Right. And that foundation started with about $8 million. Um, it now has about $12 million in it. We've given away $5 million since we funded it's it. Fantastic. So it's it's been a good it's been a good source, but we always look at it and say, you know, there now with the with the advent of the Children's Services Advisory Board right. and the United Way, and there's you know, there's all these pots of money. Right. So the, that has been a smaller pot of money comparatively to you know the rest of these organizations, but we always like to say that we're the venture capital um, for the nonprofit industry uh, in our community. So we like to Pretty do bricks so. and mortar projects or see new projects start mm -hmm. um, out of our you know out of our funding. And you certainly have the foundation has really done a lot of that. And you know there's uh, many many nonprofits who are the recipients of the generosity of the Kiwanis Foundation who now can do more because of the Qantas Foundation. Right, absolutely, absolutely. So there's, there's some organizations that, uh, that we've been funding for years and years and years and years and years, the Boys and Girls Club right. and, and the Y and things like that. Um, we're spe either through specific programs or buildings or funding mm -hmm. or whatever. But, um, but then there's the, the other programs that have come in and that we've started up and there's things here today in our community that wouldn't be here uh, had it not been for the Qantas Club of Bradenton. So you, you take the emphasy of that, you know, 90 some odd years ago mm -hmm. and look at kind of the structure and everything that's, that's happened. Uh, you know, the, the Girl Scout House, the Y just for girls, um, the, the Civic Center. Um, the Civic Center is a perfect example. And the new Manatee Performing Arts Center is the right. most probably one of the more recent uh, mm -hmm. recipients of, of, of the Qantas Foundation uh, generosity. The, the Qantas Foundation and the Qantas Club of Bradenton play a really vital part in there. And it, all of that is kind of based around that community service of being able to give back. And that's why individuals like yourselves, and I'm sure I'm glad you mentioned Senator Price and some of the other people, all of those almost to a person are dedicated to seeing what's good for our community. How can we help? And I think that's the, a, a key element that kind of permeates throughout all of their dealings. It sure is. It is. It, it is. And and uh, 
as I said, you talk about the, the bouquet of wonderful people from around our community and all the things that have been touched by them. And it's, it's, it's wonderful because everybody's got kind of a different, you know, focus exactly. or a different view or, or whatever. And, and uh, um, even though those focuses are a little bit different and, and could go in you know, a few different directions, it is amazing how, like on the Extreme Keyover project, that everybody could come together still, and everybody could say, right. "Yeah, there is a project that makes a difference to all of us." And in how this how can we how can we make it work? Right. And I think that's the attitude that kind of is there. So how can we make it work? And, and that's really evident. And, and I must say, you know, the Qantas uh, Club is always coming up with new ways and new innovative ways to you know to give back to the community. It's been now, I think, going on to its fourth year of the Christmas in August, which is held every year at McKechnie. And that's where you give back to uh, uh, disadvantaged, at-risk people. You know, they get backpacks and they get uh, shots and they get haircuts and uh, all of the things that you know at-risk and disadvantaged people cannot economically do. And that program has kind of grown by leaps and bounds, uh, which is a wonderful thing. And and the Qantas is. Uh, club is to really be, you know, congratulated for that kind of initiative. There's been a wonderful group of people behind that drive and, and uh, um, Sharon Barhorst, mm -hmm. you know, has done a wonderful job with, uh, you know, with coordinating that and funding it and, you know, and doing some, some wonderful, wonderful things uh, with it. And, and, and it has been, I mean, you go by there and you see the people and, and the, the gracious and grateful looks on their faces and, and all that they do. And, and I think it gives them a sense that, hey, you know, here's, here's a little bit of a hand up. Now mm -hmm. we've got to go do the rest. We're prepared exactly. with the tools now to go be successful in school. Whereas sometimes they're not. I mean, we know, how, you know, we know kids and we know mm -hmm. how difficult, you know, that can be to, sure. to show up with, you know, with not prepared, not being prepared and not having the right equipment, not being clothed properly to feel good about themselves. So. And, and I think what you're doing with the Qantas uh, contain and Sharon, hats off to Sharon, she's kind of carried the ball on this, but I think the entire Qantas operation is so supportive and so behind this. It's really grown from this size to it's really uh, just a people look forward to it. It's coming up in August mm -hmm. uh, this year and we're looking forward to it. But I want to take a few minutes, John, if I may, talk about some of the other major things that you've been involved in. And one of those is the uh, Manti uh, Children's Services Advisory Committee. Now, uh, the Children's Services Advisory gets part of a uh, millage uh, uh, from a half cent sales tax mm -hmm. that, uh, that the county passed. Tell us uh, basically what the Manti County Children's Services Advisory does. Well, what they do is uh, they uh, go through and kind of vet proposals from the nonprofit community mm -hmm. um, and look at them and make a recommendation mm -hmm. to the Board of County Commissioners as to you know, what they should fund and things that they do, the, uh, different areas of need mm -hmm. uh, in the community, maybe some different focuses that, that, that the community should have at that point. Mm -hmm. Um, or, or those types of things. And then they, they go through and, and monitor you mm -hmm. know, those dollars and help make sure that they're being spent as they should be, mm -hmm. um, make sure that they're being spent efficiently and that kind of stuff. So it's, a, it's a, uh, um, just a group of volunteers mm -hmm. that, that, that go through. It's an appointed position and, mm -hmm. and uh, they go through and make sure that, that things are happening. So there's always a lot of thoughtful debate Mm -hmm. uh, in those meetings, as to you know, as to the best use of the dollars and everything, because it still is a finite you know uh, amount, amount of, of dollars. Yeah. But but I'm sure someone you know with your financial acumen and, and expertise was a valuable asset to them to kind of weigh them because, as you said, there's limited amount of dollars and there's so much need and so many organizations. So your involvement with the advisory board was you know was an important asset to them. Well, they came they came to me at a time where I really didn't know very much about the different agencies and the mm -hmm. different organizations and when they asked me to be on the board I was a little shocked and I didn't quite understand why and we talked about it uh, for, for a little while Sherry Corrier was the head of the, of the board mm -hmm. at that time and and uh, now was a head wonderful of neighborhood person. services right, right, does a great job at the county but uh, I decided I'd give it a shot and took on a two-year term I think it was and and got there and, and realized that they really did kind of need somebody with some financial acumen to, to kind of go through because there's a lot of numbers rolling mm -hmm. through a lot of numbers so there were some wonderful people on the board that knew a lot about the services. programs and the services and everything else 
but I felt like some of perhaps some of the financial data uh, as to you know how successful those programs were, or how efficiently they were being run, and so right. forth, uh, was was being not evaluated perhaps as much as it should have been. So that's what I focused on right. at first, and and just just really took time to drill down into the numbers, and that's where my focus was. And as I learned more and more about the agencies. Um, you know, just really, you know, became amazed at some of the things that, the that, that these people it. do and the scope of, of what's, you know, what's available out there. But also, you know, I felt like we could really f drive people towards collaborative work uh, as opposed to, you know, territorial one, work. One or person this doing is, this right, and exactly. somebody doing that and it's the same type of thing. and and it's different assets and different resources. And I think that collaboration, which is now kind of a model, you know, kind of would, you know, came up through your, your watch. Uh, I think there was a lot of people on there that that was important to, and mm -hmm. that, that said, you know, we want to encourage people from different walks of life and different communities and different organizations to, you know, to get together and collaborate on some of these, on some of these projects. So, mm -hmm. so you had, you know, like you said, a couple different agencies doing pretty much the same thing. Well, maybe we can cut some administrative expense, maybe we can cut Absolutely. this or whatever, and get more of those dollars going through to the good mm -hmm. um, as opposed to, uh, um, you know, keeping those things separate. Stay separate and ongoing. And, and I think your business savvy really helped the Children's Services Advisory Board kind of restructure and rethink, uh, you know, how best they, they can do their business. Um, you mentioned before Jerry Parrish with the Y, uh, and they do a, lots of great thing, and you know he does a wonderful job with outreach. But you're actually president of the Manti County Family YMCA, and the Y has lots of of great programs. And tell us about your undertaking that position and some of the things that you did under your watch. Yeah, I started as a as a t-ball coach with the Y, <laughs> and uh, again. Probably a selfish reason. Coached my two nephews at T-ball and, and I think basketball after that. But hung around the Y and enjoyed enjoyed the people. Um, uh, Dave Schrott was the the mm. executive then, and uh, just really became more in tune with the mission of the Y and what the Y was was trying to accomplish. So mm -hmm. uh, Dave asked me to be on the board and mm -hmm. and uh, accepted and and. Uh, um, did a stint on the board and you know learned more and more and, and was in charge of housing or development or something and uh, then became the the president mm -hmm. uh, chair and when we announced the uh, Lakewood Ranch project which was and, uh, a, which was a great undertaking which was a great undertaking which 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 was a little bit slow catching on at first, believe it or not. Hmm. Uh, and we ended up, we, we, we had grandiose plans for paying cash for the building and you know doing all this stuff and, and, and everything else. And we ended up taking a little bit of a loan uh, on that that we got paid off very quickly after that because as soon as that building was there, it was kind of if you People. build it, they will come and just all of a sudden boom. And you know, we had no idea the, the, the unbelievable success that it was going to be. And, you know, we've been through now a couple of expansions out there. It's true, and, 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 uh, and I think, you things. know, you drive by there, I don't think there's a time that you drive by there when the parking lot's not full right. and people, and then the Y continues to do things and growth and stuff. They, you know, the new uh, facility out in Parrish, which is, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, again, one of those people, if you build it, they'll come. And, and that was and, a good collaboration with Manatee County. Exactly. And, uh, and the YMCA. And, and they jointly use that building out there now, which is a wonderful old historic building that it's they beautiful. were able to you it's know, keep. It's absolutely beautiful. Well, I want to talk about another area, too, about another organization that does a lot of good, and I want you to take a few minutes, and, and that's the DeSoto Historical Society, as well as the Historical Foundation, too. And you've been involved with them for many, many years. And again, it's one of those organizations when people think of it, well, they think like a parade or a seafood fest or anything, and they don't realize, I think a lot of people don't realize, is that the Historical Foundation does a lot of good for this community. Uh, a lot of the money that comes in from their different events goes back to the community in a wide variety of ways. So talk a little bit about your involvement with the historical. So uh, truth be told, that was the uh, the organization that, that I joined. I said, that really looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> um, and, and, uh, and, and it is. It is. It's a great organization, very colorful, wonderful people um, that, that, that do enjoy, you know, what they do and the work that they do. But behind all of that, there is a very significant purpose for 
uh, the Historical Society and the Historical Foundation. And again, it was the same type of thing. You see, you know, the guys that, that were really involved in that, like the Jack Manson and, and mm -hmm. the Lyman Botts and the Dan Blaylocks and, right. you know, people like that, uh, that, that um, you know, really had that vision for, you know, for the organization. So uh, uh, in the things that they do and, and the wonderful focus on youth, um, pri mm -hmm. primarily with, with a lot of things that they, you know, that they're involved in, um, but also, you know, doing things with Lighthouse for the Blind exactly. and a big, big com contributor to, uh, to the Lighthouse uh, through some joint projects that mm -hmm. they do together. Uh, so so it's, a, it's a group that, that really um, is this fun-loving group of men in tights, you know, that, that go all over the place, and that's the face that you see. But behind the scenes, um, you've got guys like Richard Burkholz, who dresses up like Santa Claus every year and rides around mm -hmm. on the float and collects toys from mm -hmm. all the you know, neighborhoods in West Bradenton, and then through Toys for Tots, brings those out, and as still dressed as Santa Claus, you know, delivers them along with the, the crew of conquistadors. So um, it's just a, you know, just guys like that that, mm -hmm. that, that do wonderful things you know, there and, and, and traditionally wonderful things that, that, that continue to go on you know, year after year. And, 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 you know, it continues to expand too. You know, the foundation each year as a result of the success of several of their festivals like the Seafood Festival will uh, give grants to a wide variety of different nonprofits throughout the Aside from that, you know, they, they have an increased presence. It brings a lot of community pride to, throughout Manatee County. They've increased the size of a really significant event, I think, is the Children's Parade, mm -hmm. uh, which, you know, started out relatively small and over the past 10 years or so has now grown to be a major event. And that's really outreaching to young people and their families to encourage them to, you know, have pride in their community. And I think that's what DeSoto does. It has. And, and, and the economic development, I think, that happens <laughs> through the DeSoto, you, you, you go, to different festivals all over the country, mm -hmm. as far as Alaska, and they know, you know, the the, the the Soto Heritage Festival, and and it's a, you know, it's a wonderful thing. And you know, and just uh, as president, you know, former member, you know, the parade itself genders so much pride in this community. Mm -hmm. People line up, they wait for it, people bring their entire families they, to do it. And it is, it's really a moment in time where it's a celebration. And you know, Manatee County and the DeSoto Society is to be congratulated for that because it's grown and grown and you put so much work and effort into it. All of the events that are put into it. John, we're kind of winding down a little bit, and I, I want to take a few minutes uh, to talk about something I know that's really very, very important to you, and that's your family. Uh, you have a wonderful wife, Tompi, and you have two beautiful children, and your children uh, are, are, are kind of, uh, uh, the apple hasn't fallen too, too far from the tree. They, they both have their own way of being recognized for service to the community. Now, Reese was just honored at the most, uh, most recent uh, uh, Spirit of Manatee Awards, and Tell us about that. Yeah, April was was uh, was recognized at the Spirit of Manatee Awards. So April, my daughter, sorry. right? And um, uh, April uh, was recognized as the Young Spirit Award, um, which was tremendous. And and April uh, has a very kind, caring, loving heart um, that that just really enjoys to do it. I think with both my children from an early age, like my mom and dad did for me from a very early age, learned about service. The two oak trees that are planted in front of the United Way building on 14th Street were planted by my son and daughter at a Better Manatee Day one year. And they continually drive by and say, there's our oak trees, Dad. Um, and, and it's their oak trees. You know, and they, they, just, they just love the fact and have watched that grow over time uh, into, you know, into what they are. And I think it's been things like that and just coming out with me on the random mornings and picking up trash at the stadium at Manatee High School and you know right. whatever um, that, that have taught them and, and helped them to understand that it's important and, and, and we've been a blessed family, you yeah. know, certainly and, and we just you know, we feel like and the kids understand that it's important to give back, you know, when, when you're that blessed and, and uh, I always say we've taken a lot out of Manatee County and it's important that we put a lot back into it. Well, I remember when uh, when April was getting the uh, 
the award, the testimonial on her behalf, uh, the, was talking about at a very young age uh, how she had already matured enough, you know, to be able to put something together. And I think she was doing spaghetti dinners, uh, you know, to raise money for for for, this, for her school. But recently, Reese was honored as well. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Reese was uh, recently honored at uh, Junior Day at Cardinal Mooney High School uh, by the Florida Museum, and he was given the Anne Frank Humanitarian Award for That's some fantastic. of his efforts. Uh, around and at the school and and Reese again is a very caring heart and and just you know the the adults always comment to me about how accepting he is of people and, and his peers and his classmates and, and everything else so it's important to their mom and I uh, that they understand that I think as it was important to both of our sets of parents Tompy's parents were very involved back in Knoxville Tennessee and mm -hmm. Rotary and in different events and their schools and and everything else. So it's just, you know, it's, it's been important to us as a family and, and being able to do things together as recently as last Saturday doing a, a, a Kids Against Hunger event, mm. you know, over at Kiwanis Hall and we packaged 50,000 meals. Now, you know, and, that, uh, and, I, and this is not the first time Kiwanis has done that. Mm -hmm. You know, they've done it you know, several times. And sure. it's really an amazing feat to see that. Uh, you know, they put, to, put it together and you have know, rows of people, uh, you know, some people, or mixing some or packaging mm -hmm. some just going mm -hmm. and it's it's quite a sight to see and we're very fortunate we've taped a couple of those uh, that community that family feeling that you have you know kind of permeates a lot of, of if not all of the the work that you do uh, from young people to your service with Kiwanis to your service with all of these different organizations you know it really stems from you know this kind of giving back and and John, tell us a little bit about why you think that you know you've you've developed these these natural uh, traits. I you know I, I think I think part of it is is a good upbringing um, from you know from my mom and dad. I mean my mom was uh, uh, the director of volunteers over at Blake Hospital for a very very long time and actually got onto the state board of of volunteer services. And my dad was extremely involved in in Kiwanis and brought the NCAA Division III, you know, national championship to, to Bradenton as a volunteer and just always involved in kind of big level, mm -hmm. you know, types of types of things. And I think you recognize that when you're, you know, when your parents do that. And I and I and as I said, I, I just think that that with a community that we've been in, we've been very, very fortunate. And I think we have, Bradenton has given us a lot, right. you know, it's, it's given us a lot. So we're just always firm believers, you know, not only from a community point of view, but in our faith, yeah. that it's the right thing to do. Right. And uh, um, that's something that I've tried to instill, you know, not only in my children, but in the key clubbers or the people who play on my football teams or, um, you know, the youth group at church or whatever, whatever the, case the case may be. That, that, that it's incumbent upon us as adults to pass that me message along. One of the things that April said in her acceptance speech at the Spirit of Manatee was at the end, she, stuck, she said, there's, you know, many of you think our generation, you know, is gonna be challenged and not be as successful and that we've, you know, sit there and play video games all day and everything else. And she said, I bet you all had some kind of a mentor in your life and somebody that you followed, you know, and, and that was important to you and that was an example to you. And she said, how many of you have been a mentor like that to somebody else? Yeah. And it was just a great message. And kind of, of take your you breath know, away. It, it really you. did. I mean, it was, you know, it was, the chest was all pumped up and very <laughs> proud and everything else. But what a message. Um, and for her to come up with that and then to deliver it in front of 700 people exactly. is a testament to her. And, and by the way, the 4-H the, the Tropicana speech competition where she learned how to, you know, where she learned how to do that. So another group of people mm -hmm. putting something together that, that profoundly affected her and gave her the ability to stand up in front of all those people. And, and, and did so with, with such poise and, and uh, uh, just was so articulate. It was, right. it was one, and, and you should be so rightfully Thank proud. You. But I think that's where it comes from. I think that's where that, you know, that, that comes from. And, and, and in anything, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's, that it's a learned behavior. It's mm -hmm. not just something that happens, you Over, know, by yeah. chance. And, and um, I think I think you're exactly right on that. And, and you know, as a coach and as a mentor, you know, there's a lot of kids 
that you know that need some guidance, mm -hmm. and uh, and and you know, being able to sit down next to you and say, well, you know, you know Mr. Vita, I'm having an issue, or I don't know how to handle this, or I don't know what to do, or something. And I'm sure that during the course of your career and your outreach to this community, you've had to sit down and have those talks with with a lot of young people to say, you know. What do you tell young people when they come to you with their issues or their problems? I, I think, you know, the first part is just to listen. Um, mm -hmm. Oftentimes they don't have somebody that, that just will listen to them. And then I try not to be judgmental, um, which is, mm -hmm. which those, those of, of you that know me know that's very hard for me to do. But uh, um, I try not to with, with the kids that come up with something like that. And, and, and just try to, try to, you know, be a good listener first and then come back with suggestions so that they feel like it's not Mr. Vita telling them what to do. Exactly. It's, it's them following advice, actually. And, it's, it's saying, and as I said, sometimes it is watching them fail. And that's hard to do. It's very difficult to do. Mm. And sometimes it's heartbreaking. But you know, sometimes those are the best lessons mm. that, that, they'll, you know, that they'll learn. So, so really, you know, just being that source. And when, and when you need to, you know, being you know, that, that motivator or the Disciplinarian, you know, disciplinarian or whatever it takes. Or whatever, you know, whatever it takes. And sometimes it's pointing things out to them that they're, you know, that they're not doing well. We just yeah. had a very difficult situation uh, in Key Club, you know, with one of our officers. And we, you know, we said, maybe this isn't right for you. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe we should do something else. And, and that's okay. You know, that, that's okay. I think what people and I think what parents have to realize sometimes is that we embark on things that, 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 aren't right for us and that, mm -hmm. that aren't going to, you know, aren't going to be right. And I never encourage quitting. You know, I never, you know, I think when you're committed to something, you know, you need to be committed and stick with it. But certainly there's some situations that we get ourselves into that you just say, you know, it's just not maybe right. It's, maybe it's better to take a step back right. and, 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 and rethink it. You know, and, and I'm sure that, you know, and, and you know, and another great love of yours is obviously football because you've been involved in uh, youth football for many, many years. Um, you know, whether you're sitting there on the sidelines, you know, coaching or, or mentoring somebody, you do this with a tremendous amount of love and respect for these young people. You see it at Key Club, you see it, you know, with your dealings. It's got to mean something to them that, you know, they're talking about Mr. Vita five, 10, 15 years from now saying, you know, when I sat down next to him, he told me this, or he, you know, he explained something to me. And that's a wonderful feeling. All those young people that throughout the course of, of all of the years that you've been doing it have taken something away from you, if not by example, by those very words that you've shared with them that has made a difference in their lives. And, and that's a great legacy to have, John. And that's, that's, you know, people say, why do you do this? And that's probably it. I mean, the biggest compliment, I've got kids that are coming in now that are I say kids, I have adults that are coming in now that are bringing their children in That's that I coached when I was, and they'll come up and say, coach, do you remember when, <laughs> you know, you said this or you did that or this happened and you handled this and whatever. And you just kind of smile and say, yeah, and go along with it when you really don't, you know, <laughs> truth be told, but, but, but to it's them important it to them, something. but to them it meant something and, and it, and it kind of stuck there. And, and sometimes I think I said that. That's pretty profound, you know, <laughs> that, that that I said that. But, but you uh, do that as as, as as a matter of fact. I mean, I think, and, and you just mentioned, you know, to always try to do the right thing. And I think, you know, when you're working with young people or the kids at the key club or on, you know, the, the coach, uh, you know, you're, you're saying things, and you don't intend it to be profound or have some deep. It's just that everyday kind of basic understanding, doing the right thing, that you're trying to impart to all these young people. And, and I think year after year that you've done this, I don't think you know, a lot of people realize the impact that you've had on their lives. And I think that's a tremendous thing, John. I hope so. I mean, it's, 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 you know, it'd, be, it'd be bad to kind of step back and say that, that you didn't. But I think at the end of the day, you, know, you kind of look at these decisions, whether they're profound or not or whatever. But in our little group, you know, at work, we always look at each other when situations arise and we say, what's fair? Mm. And, and you go back to kind of what's fair for everybody. And it might not be exactly what you want or how you want it or whatever, but you go, okay, that's fair. Mm. You know, and, and at least you can walk away with that. And, and I think everybody walks away with that feeling, whether it's at work or in a volunteer organization right. or the kids at school or in football or, you know, whatnot. And, and, and you know, talk about what's what's fair, but um, that's always what I try to 
you know, try to roll and I, out. And I think that you've, you accomplish that more every day. Um, in the last few minutes, John, I want to talk to you a little bit about what do you, do you say to you know, your peers in the community, colleagues that you work with, to encourage them to get involved in the community? Uh, I know that you've worked with many, many people who are to have giving and uh, hearts and you know, always try to do the right thing. But there's a, a variety of people who just don't get involved in the community for different reasons. And what do you say to people to say, hey, listen, if you only did this, if you could only mentor, if you could only coach, how do you encourage people to have that spirit of, of community? Well, first off, I try to tell them, you know, just find something you like, find something that you enjoy. And, and you know, whether you fish, like sports, play golf, like to read, you know, whatever. I mean, there's probably a, an organization that could use your help mm -hmm. doing something that, that you enjoy. Um, I don't like the busy card. Everybody tries to play the busy card and say, well, I've got this going on and that going on and, and whatever, or I need to be with my family more. Mm -hmm. Well, I take my family with me, you know, <laughs> and we go and do things and, and what a great, great times we have together in, in doing that. But, you know, we all, we're, we're all busy, but mm -hmm. I, I think the reality of it is, is that there's times that you can find during point. the day to, you know, to do things. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, some of the, some of the most wonderful experiences that we have, and I, it's uh, Big K Mentoring is what they call it now, mm -hmm. but we used to call it Big Buddies in Kiwanis when we mm -hmm. started it. And it was an hour a month of going and sitting with a child in elementary school that was having a hard time. You know, that is, these are hard kids. And spending an hour with them and having lunch. And coming back the next month and saying, hey, you were talking to me about that test. How, how did you do How'd on you that do? test? How did, how did that go? How has this been going? How's that been going? And you know, the next thing you know, you're getting calls from teachers or the principal or whatever, and Jimmy's having, you know, having a hard time today. Would you, would you just mind, you know, could you swing down here and just say hi to him and just say, hey, you were swinging by the school and, and those types of things. And, and it's just so little. To us, it's, it's so little. And I, and I think oftentimes we probably think to ourselves, that's what? probably not doing any good. I mean, it's an but hour a week, and, but to them it's huge and it's amazing because a lot of them, you know, their home life, they, they don't feel like they have anybody. And, that and you know, to have someone to listen, to have someone to say, ask how they're doing, or as you mentioned earlier, just to listen, uh, it, it, it's huge. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a well said. Everybody can contribute in various ways, whether it's an hour a month or, you know, or, or by going to a reading camp or anything. So everybody can contribute because there's a lot of need out there. And, and if you've, as I've mentioned earlier in the program, you've done so much with so many different organizations, you know that there's a need out there for, for services and resources. There is, there is, absolutely. And, and as I said, I think, I think oftentimes people say, well, you know, it's, it's not really gonna make a big difference, but it does. And, and uh, you don't have to have a lot of money to do it. You don't have to, you know, have this or that or whatever, or be the right thing. Or, you know, I, I remember the first time I got up in front of Key Club, uh, you know, 20 years ago, and Mike Kelly was the, the, Kiwanis, or the, the faculty advisor, I was scared to death. And mm -hmm. here I was, I was, you know, 28 years old at the time, so not that far out of high school myself, comparatively. And, you know, you look at it and you go, boy, I was, I was just scared to death that first time. So I think that apprehension sometimes keeps people from, from doing it. But the bottom line is, is that those kids, you know, are very responsive and, and are very accepting, you know, of you, uh, when, you when you show them that, that you do care a little bit. Well, John, uh and you do care a great bit. You, 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 you've shown in, in, in every aspect of your work and, and throughout these many years that you, know, you do care and you continuously give back at all different levels, you know, for the Key Club, or the YMCA, or the Boy Scouts, or whatever the organization that may be that you're involved with, you always have given back. And it's a tremendous thing. It's come a long way from being asked to leave uh, Key Club in right. high school. But, you know, whatever that lesson was that you learned there, you've really taken that to 
heart and continue to give back to this community. And Manatee County is very blessed to have an individual like you who continues to do that, and not only as a business leader and a professional person, but also as a caring, nurturing individual who wants to make a difference. And, well, you're and, very kind. Thank you. Well, thank you, John. And thank you for joining us. I want to thank John for being involved with us today because knowing that there are people in this community who have deep involvement makes a difference in our community. Individuals like John Vita contribute so much to the fabric of Manatee County, and Manatee County is very fortunate to have him. I want to thank you for watching this edition of Community Connections on METV, and we'll see you next time.